Welcome to the Turning Lemons into Lemonade podcast. Each week, your host, Amy Mewborn, business strategist and advisor, will bring you the stories of how successful women entrepreneurs turn their tragedies into triumphs to create the businesses that are changing the world today. And now, your host, Amy Mewborn. Michelle G. is a certified matchmaker, relationship coach, and number one best-selling author with a Bachelor of Science degree in social psychology. Michelle and her team are passionate about helping professionals remove obstacles that prevent success in love and life. Welcome, Michelle G. You have been one of my most cherished and dearest friends for a number of years at this point. And so I'm so excited to have you here on the podcast and let you tell some of the stories that I know about you. You have built, I think, some of the prettiest and most distinctive brands. And so I'm so excited to have you tell our listeners a little bit more about how you've done it. So I want to ask you to get started is how you got started in your business. Well, thank you very much, Amy, for having me. You two are one of my dearest and closest friends. I mean, we chat all the time and and I'm so, you know, excited to be here. So my first business, um, my first business failed. Let me just start by putting it out there. It flopped tremendously. Um, but I, I, I got involved in my business after serving in the Marine Corps for 13 years. And so I served in the Marine Corps. My main job, if you will, was military intelligence. And I also served in various roles of international diplomacy and conflict resolution. So I was definitely involved in a lot of big, high-level conversations with a lot of powerful people, majority men in the room, and relationships really became kind of my knack. It became kind of my thing. And throughout all my different travels and experiences, I ended up meeting a boy, and I fell in love, and you know how that happens, right? You meet a boy, and things just go out the window sometimes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, and so as, as that kind of happened, um, my, him and I, we got married and my career continued to boom, but I, slowly as, as my career booms, my marriage really took a hard hit. Um, and I found it really interesting that I was able to have all these conversations with these very powerful men and talk about U.S. policy and a lot of very high level items and be able to get them to buy in on the things that I was selling, if you will, you know. Um, but I couldn't get my ex-husband to really pick up the socks off the floor. So there was this huge disconnect. You know what I mean? <laughs> I um, get it. <laughs> it's like, what? I, I talk to men all day long. I get them to do what I need them to do. And then my ex-husband can't even pick up the socks. So it, it was just like a light bulb moment for me. Um, additionally, I was deployed several times. I've deployed to Iraq and, um, you know, just it, t- it took a toll on me and it took a toll on my marriage. And we finally got to a point where we just didn't, you know, we wanted different things and, and we just weren't in alignment. We didn't have the same goals and ambitions. And so we separated. And the truth is for anyone who's listening or anyone who's been through a divorce, there is a lot of truth when it's said you know what, you don't see a person's true colors until you go through a divorce. And Mm -hmm. holy crap, I really saw my ex-husband's colors in such a way that I was just like, wow, this is the worst experience of my life. I mean, I've been to Iraq, nothing compared to, to just the pain and just the heartache and going through that whole process. So I found myself that I had a choice of like, okay, do you want to continue in the Marine Corps? Do you want to continue in this marriage? Do like, what, what do you want to do with yourself? And I found myself at a turning point where I decided I wanted to reinvent myself. And when I made that decision, that was one of the hardest moments of my life because I walked away from a career that I was very good at. I was succeeding. I was on top of promotion. I was decorated. Um, I was very well known in my community. Everybody knew who I was. And then I was walking away from my marriage, you know, starting all over. And honestly, I didn't really have a clue what the hell I was going to do. And then as fate would have it, I go to Toastmasters because in the the Marine Corps and you, you know, your husband's in the Navy. So we have a lot of military jargon, you know, everything's acronyms and short things. Right. And so as we, you know, as one of the things of me 
moving into the sibling world, I was like, I need to be able to communicate without just always speaking in short code, always speaking in, you know, acronyms. And so I went to Toastmasters and funny enough in Toastmasters, I got invited to an entrepreneurial conference, which is actually where I met Amy years ago. And um, that was really the beginning of me kind of starting my business in relationship coaching, helping couples really be able to work through their differences or if they were going to uncouple to do it in a way that was really healthy and a safe environment for both of them. Yeah. So I remember when I met you at that conference and the thing about you that I think is just so you is that you embody everything about the business that you're putting that you're in at that moment. And so at the time you were running food passionista. Yes. And there was this beautifully drawn character. And then in real life, Michelle looked just like this character. So, I mean, a graphic designer had basically drawn this gorgeous Michelle (laughs) And I remember you coming to my house with me and Mike and you actually led us through one of your sessions. And I will tell you that you really truly get to the heart of some of the challenges that we all have in marriage because anyone that says that marriage is easy, they are lying or they're not having the real conversations. Yeah. They're stuffing their feelings down. Yep. And at this point, I think you and I met, I'm thinking that was probably right around 2011. Mm-hmm. And Mike and I, at this point, we've been together for 17 years and I love him. I'm so glad that he's my <laughs> husband, but you know that I haven't necessarily felt that way all days, you know, Mm -hmm. marriage is hard. Relationships are hard and we've done marriage counseling in the past. And I think it's one of the best things we've ever done because it's so nice to have a conversation with someone else around. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, that was the whole concept of it was, you know, I did marriage counseling with my ex-husband. I went to marriage retreats. We were not religious, but we went and sought out some, you know, some Christian counseling as well. And we just couldn't get on the same page. So I wanted to create something in the couple's environment where, you know, food is something that is universal. It's a universal language. People can come together and can break bread. And I know that in couples, especially like cooking together and doing things together, that was what Food Passionista was all about. Yeah. Um, and I love that, you know, I love that brand and, and I hope to revive it one day, even though it didn't do so well. <laughs> I was young. <laughs> but that's the thing is, you know, when you launch your first business, you don't know what you're supposed to do. And I talk about the fact that I launched my first business as a brick and mortar studio. And I said, I can point to $75,000 worth of mistakes that I made within the first year. And we don't know often what we don't know. We just dive right in. And if we're true entrepreneurs, you kind of feel like pulled to do something and you just can't not do it. But that doesn't mean that you have all the information yet or that you know exactly how to do it. And we met at a business coaching conference and Mm -hmm. we've both invested a lot of money and a lot of time into coaching and mastermind groups because when you're in your own business, you don't see what you're missing. You don't know what you don't know. And I was actually a guest on a podcast this morning and I was telling a story about being at a mastermind with you and Deb Cantrell and Deb saying to me, and it was so painful at the time, but it was so true. She said, so I've known you and you've had this same staffing problem for two years. And we were sitting in Scottsdale. I remember. And and she said to me, she's like, once you've had this problem for two years, that's no longer the problem. You're the problem. (laughs) And there is nothing like having people in your life that can look you in the eye and say, 
I love you. And I'm saying this with all the love in the world, Mm -hmm. but until you get out of your own way or until you figure this out, you will continue down the same path day in and day out forever. Absolutely. And I remember that. And I, you know, I think that was my first introduction at that business conference and meeting women like yourself and then developing these, these relationships that are, you know, not just business relationships, but these friendships. I mean, the truth is that that's why I'm a big supporter and proponent of get a coach, know what you're getting, get into a mastermind where you're around people who are smarter than you because just because you're, you don't feel like you're the smartest person in the room. I know I felt that so many times with you and Deb. You know, I was still very, a, very much a baby, an infant, if you will, in in business. But I learned so much from you guys. But I also saw that I was able to give you guys some perspective and some feedback that I was like, oh wow, I I I didn't think that that would serve you guys, but it did. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it, surround yourself around people that can that can be honest with you. And like you said, look you in the eye and tell you, Hey, you need to, you need to quit slacking here, you know? (laughs) So food passionista was kind of where you launched. Now tell us about the business that you're running now. Yes. So that was where I started. Um, and here's the thing. I, I love anything that has to do with interpersonal relationships, interpersonal communication. I really, I'm just fascinated at the human experience and how much of our lives is surrounded and it, it's all about relationships. So um, as I worked with a lot of couples, I found that there was a lot of women who were in relationships or in marriages that were not healthy and they were looking to regain their voice and regain their power. And through the time they decided that they were going to step away from their marriage and they really didn't know that they, they needed someone to turn to, to help them really kind of regain that voice, regain their path. And so um, I was fortunate to receive all these referrals and kind of that's how my business evolved to what it is today. And it's really been more focused on helping women and also men, but primarily women to be able to regain their power, their voice, and reach their untapped potential when they're single and starting over again. Because it's not easy, particularly if you have um, children, you know, getting back out there and dating, you know, you don't want to feel this guilt of like, oh my God, I'm leaving my child to go and and find someone. And then you have family members who also contribute to that, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're a woman who didn't have children and you're starting over And then all of a sudden now you find yourself that you had this enormous amount of debt and all these other things that just are really uncomfortable. And and we kind of have some shame around because they're, they come from our past experience, you know, and you can call it baggage, you can call it what it is, but, um, and, and that's really where my business has evolved is, is in helping these women really not only find love, but break through these obstacles that prevent them to be successful. Cause typically you know, we're successful in our businesses and all these other areas. But when it comes to love, we want to take the same approach, right? We want to be that boss woman. We want to be that term boss lady. Um, And the reality of it is that it doesn't work. You know what I mean? We have to understand the feminine and the masculine energy and how and when is the right time to be the leader and when is the right time to receive influence in a relationship. That is so profound because I think that as women, we're so proud of the fact now that we're empowered and we have fought for all of the roles and the businesses that we've built. And it's really hard sometimes to turn that off at the end of the business day and just Mm -hmm. show up and be a good partner and a good spouse and not be bossy. I know Mm -hmm. my husband often says to me, he's like, I really wish that you would just ask me instead of telling me, (laughs) you know, it's not, I don't even realize I'm doing it, but my communication, when we're communicating with women, we can often be very real and have a very upfront conversation. And it sometimes, even though it's the same words in the same voice, it comes across differently with the people that we love the most. Absolutely. You, and, and I'm happily remarried, so I met the love of my life. I manifested the man, as I like to say. Um, and I'll tell you, I mean, we, we actually, our anniversary was yesterday. Congratulations. <laughs> Happy anniversary. 
Thank you. We, we, we're far apart right now, but when we get together, we'll, we'll celebrate. But, you know, we were just talking about like how much we've grown as a couple. And I'll be honest with you, just because I'm in the field and I'm a relationship expert and I talk about it, you know, I'm still Michelle. I still have those moments where Michelle comes out and I'm just like, what are you talking about? And he's like, he is quick to be like, excuse me, relationship coach. And I'm like, you know what? That's <laughs> bullshit do not call me out like that but it's it's kind of our way to like all right let's let's kind of bring it back down and let's use humor to kind of de deflect the situation just a little bit you know so trust me nobody's perfect not even if you're a relationship coach an expert or nobody's perfect but the thing is to continuously practice right sure Again, a lot of it is about the fact that we can't see what's going on in our own lives, in our own businesses, in our own relationships. And that's why it's so important to have advisors and to have people that can look at it because we don't see it. Mm -hmm. And in relationships in particular, we really know how to like push our spouse's buttons. And it's funny that you talk about uh, Leo saying that okay, Miss Relationship Coach, Mike mm -hmm. and I have this thing where if he's really bothering me, I'm like, okay, Paul. And he'll say, okay, Danny, because those are our parents that are like the strongest personalities. Mm -hmm. And when you say that, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's a little bit of it that makes you mad. And then there's a little bit of it that you're like, okay, I really am kind of being like that person. <laughs> yeah, you, you just got checked. It's like, ooh, that was that was a poke, and it was it was a good one, you know. Um, but I think it takes time. I mean, it takes time to get to that point where, I mean, had it been Amy or had it been Michelle years ago, right, when we first met, that would not go over really easy, right? <laughs> there would have been World War Three probably. And was a number of times. <laughs> oh, I know, you know, but I think it's a part of getting to know one another, you know, and I think it's also how we react and we understand that conflict isn't bad in our relationship. Um, that's really what, what changes the dynamic of a relationship. So what has been the biggest struggle in growing your business? You know, had you asked me this question a year ago, I would have said really coming together with a great marketing plan. And the reason being is because Amy knows this and it's been something that we talked about in our masterminds, you know, working with single, with the single community and also working with couples, it's two different languages, right? It's two different. Um, but I think as my business has grown, I've really been able to hone in that messaging because I'm talking to one person. I think today the biggest struggle that I'm noticing is the same struggle that we were talking about at that monster mine. And it's your team. Ooh. It's finding a really good group of people who believe in your vision, who are going to be there and, and kind of not only appreciate your vision as much as you do, but want to be a part of it and want to help shape it. And I find myself that today that's my biggest struggle in growing my business. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just, you know, we live in a world where everything is, everyone's Insta famous and wants to be Insta famous. Um, I'm not really sure, but that's what I found is the struggle for me right now where I'm at in my business. I love that. And it's absolutely brilliant because I think it's one of the big struggles that so many business owners, but especially women business owners have, because as women, we kind of feel pulled to want to do it all. And just because we can doesn't mean we should. And so, you know, there's often, there's a lot of angst over hiring your first person on your team. And then there's some angst over getting that person trained. And then it's, okay, well now I want to scale my business and I need this person, but I also need all of these tasks as well. And, you know, we kind of look around and we hope that we're going to find like the one magical VA or the one magical assistant where they can do everything. They can edit the videos and they can do all the social media and they'll manage your schedule. And you know, like the magical unicorn that yeah. we've all been looking for in life. <laughs> and you know, really in order to build a great team, there's a number of different pieces that yeah. often go into that. 
So tell me, how have you dealt with that? Yeah, you know, you're right. Because you know what the thing is that when you start off, you are that magical unicorn. You're, I mean, I did it. I know you did it. You learned oh. everything, right? And, and you're like, oh, I got to find someone who, who can do it like me. So we get stuck in this trap. Um, I think what I, I will say, the way that I've overcome that is my hiring process. I'm very methodical in my hiring process. So I like to be able to talk to people. Um, I, I ask for very particular things. The first thing that I ask for is I ask if they have some sort of personal website or, or anything that I can see online. I ask for a LinkedIn profile. I asked for a resume, um, and it's amazing what some people present as a resume. Uh -huh. It's been kind of interesting for me. Um, I also ask them if they've taken any type of personality or strength finder test, and I, I get that actually from another friend of ours, which is Kelly, mm -hmm. um, and she kind of puts people through that process, and um, a strength finder test or a DIST. And last but not least, I ask about three referrals that are not friends, but people who have seen them work, like, for example, maybe a former colleague, um, or maybe someone that mentored them, or someone that they've mentored, right? Because I want to see them in those different environments, in those different lights, and how they interact with people. I'm in a people business, you know, that, so that's really important. If, if I'm not able to pick up the phone, everyone that's on my team needs to be able to pick up the phone and know what to say. I mean, it's not their job, but I treat my business kind of like in the Marine Corps. We all have to wear multiple hats because sometimes until we get to the level of growth, then it's important that, you know, we all know what's going on. And I put my, uh, my hiring process through three steps. Uh, they do an interview with me. They do an interview with my husband. My husband's a part because he knows me the best inside out. Um, so if, if you don't have someone like that, but you're right hand person. And then last but not least, I always have them interview with the rest of the people on the team because it's really important that as a team, I want to be able to say, guys, um, let's go out for let's come together at this time. Let's do some planning for next year, but let's be able to go out and have a glass of wine and enjoy some music. Yeah. And that's really important to me because I, I bring that from my experience in the Marine Corps. Camaraderie is, is huge for me and that's how I grew up, you know, and, and I want to have that in, in my business culture. So that's kind of how I've been able to really mitigate and, and, you know, weed out the candidates that are not a good fit for me. I love that. I always had the philosophy when I was hiring people for the fitness studios that if I would not invite them over to my house on a Friday night to sit with a great bottle of wine, then they probably were not a good representation of me or my brand. Yeah. And, you know, like you just said, camaraderie, when we talk about, especially when we're running online businesses, mm -hmm. when we talk about getting people on board with the vision and the mission, we have to be able to work together as a cohesive team. And the more everyone likes each other, respects each other, and wants to help each other, the less things fall through the cracks, the less finger pointing there is. Everything just works better when people like who they work with, period. I, you know what? And I'm glad you brought that up because there's something too that I don't know if Look, it doesn't matter if you, if it's you and one other person, you're already a team. So, I mean, whoever's listening, if you're a two man team, a three man team or a 10 man team, there's something that I want to say in regards to, you know, we use, we do this in the Marine Corps and that's counseling. Every quarter we kind of do a evaluation. I think it's what it's used in, in the civilian world, but I always call it a counseling and it's not a bad thing, but it's an opportunity to t highlight where you're doing really great, what areas need improvement, and what what are your goals? Like, I think as small businesses or mid-sized businesses, we need to invest in our people so our people invest in us, which means we need to take care of them and care about what are their goals and aspirations because that goes such a long way in being able to build that cohesive team in the long run. That's brilliant. So tell me, what has been the absolute worst day in your business? Oh, man, the absolute worst day in my business. I remember it clear. My assistant, former assistant, Mickey, calls me, and I believe it is 4.56 in the morning. Um, she calls me, and she says, Michelle, um, I was trying to do something in your CRM system, and I have deleted your entire mailing list. 
and your uh, your your welcome campaign. And I'm that like, was, well, that was mine too. The same exact <laughs> thing. That is the worst day in my business. How the, how does that happen? But keep going. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know how it happened. Um, it was only the welcome and I had it in a separate doc. So I wasn't so upset about that. But my email list, like I have been working hard. Some of these people, like I know the people on my email list through events, through whatever. And I literally, I took a big gulp and I, I looked at the phone and I said, she's like, I'm trying to call at that time. I was using uh, I think I was using Entreport. I, I think that's what I was using. She's like, I'm trying to call Entreport. I'm trying to see if they can do a backup. Man, did I learn the big lesson a lot about how you have to back up your email list almost weekly, you know, don't rely, you know, cause a lot of the CRM systems they, that I know of or the one that I use, they don't back it up for you. And it was just like, I wanted to literally throw myself off the bridge. And here's even one, here's another kicker. We were getting ready to do like an email marketing campaign, um, like a three series to get people to, you know, come in through that and be able to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. So it was a really personalized series and I had picked the people and everything. And I said to her, okay, Michelle, her name was Michelle too. I said, all right, Michelle, listen, um, I, I need a moment. Um, I need you to call and keep trying to figure this out. And uh, I'm going to call you back. And I literally hung up the phone and I think I just screamed and Leo came out and he's like, what happened? <laughs> and uh, he's like, what's wrong? Are you okay? And he calls me mama. He's like, are you okay mama? And I'm like, you know what? I am going to freaking kill this girl. How hard is it? What, what happened? I, I didn't even ask her what happened. I couldn't ask her what happened. I had to like get all this out of my system and then I could pick up the phone and just say, Hey Mickey, what is going on? Like, tell me. But literally that was the worst day because here's, here's the kicker on top of that. We had not generated any profit in that month. So I was counting on this being a big campaign to drive in and bring, I mean, we were at, we were at no, pro, like literally at no profit. So of course I had to pay her, I had to pay my bills. I was shitting bricks and yeah. So that was the worst day in my business. <laughs> and the thing is, as entrepreneurs, those are those things that you never plan for. You never imagine will happen to you. Mm -hmm. And for me, it happened on cart open for the biggest launch I'd ever planned. And you know, all you can do at that moment is say, well, oh, crap, that is like the worst thing that I think could have ever happened to me at this moment. So how do we fix it? So how did they fix it? I don't know how she magically got Entreport. They pulled a uh, something. Yeah. They pulled something. I don't know from where they said it wasn't as accurate, right? But they, 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 she pulled something yeah. and she was able to get it back. Um, and then, you know, she profusely apologized, but what I really appreciate, you know, I, I had a really extensive conversation with her afterwards and that was a big learning lesson for us because I was like, okay, now we need to put systems or like standard operating procedures in place of, what do we need to back up every month or weekly or monthly or quarterly, right? What reports need to need to like, it, it just got me thinking really more as a CEO instead of just, Oh, I'm a, I'm a small two person entrepreneur. You know what I mean? Like kind of take that step back and really look at it. Like, no, 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 this is like legit a business. I'm not just messing around here. Like I'm not freelancing kind of thing. And that was a big, big time where my perspective really shifted. That's amazing. And it, you know, you often look at your email list or you look at your CRM and you think I have this one thing and no one can ever take it away from me. And, you know, Marie Forleo was the first one that said, don't ever build your house on rented land. And she was talking about not building your business on Facebook or mm -hmm. Twitter or whatever. And so, you know, we really look at our email list or, the funnels that we've built in our CRM as the assets that we have in our business. And in a lot of ways they are because I have certain funnels that I turn on three and four times a year and generate instantaneous income. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the minute they disappear, you're like, Oh my gosh, did I just blow up my entire business? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, oh, you know what? Did I take a diagram? Do I have this written out somewhere? And, you know, you, you can't mess around with that because it's like if one thing is broken in that entire system, it takes a long time to figure out what that one thing is sometimes. Yeah. Depending how intricate the funnel is, right? So what is your secret sauce? What do you bring to the world that is different than the other people in your space? You know, that's a Kelly question. <laughs> that reminds me of Kelly because she would say that. She's like, what's your secret sauce? What makes you different? Um, you know, I think, you know, there's, there's a couple of things. The first thing that I would say is I can sit here and name off all the credentials that I have, which in my industry, there's, unless, you know, it's one of two ways, either you're credentialed, like through different um, coaching certifications, or you have a school degree. For me, I am an avid learner. And I and I find that I'm always either reading something, I'm always going to some certification, I'm going through some course, I'm paying money to do, I'm always investing in my education. And I find that that is something that sets me apart. I want to always I'm the person who reads empirical data. What that means is those research studies that all the psychologists and sociologists put out with all that data and stat numbers. I like to read that stuff and then really take it and say, okay, how can I apply that to my coaching? How can I write an article about that? I think the other thing that really distinguishes me and my business is that I am a content creator and I really ha didn't understand or, or accept that, right? Because I was like, no, I'm just, I'm just doing this because this is because I have to. And then I really kind of had to take a step back and look and be like, wow, this is changing me as a person in my industry, but it's also changing my business. I'm a content creator, you know, mm -hmm. being able to teach people. And, and that's another thing, being a trainer, being able to teach people through different touch points is something that I've learned. And I really like camera. I mean, I love doing camera work and, you know, I'm always trying to find information to put out there. Um, and that's something that I actually have to get back to. But those things I feel is what makes me different. And also, I'm very tough love. What you see is what you get. I'm never going to sugarcoat stuff. And I feel like a lot of people out there may give some cookie cutter advice or regurgitate what they've heard. And for me, it's all science-based, there's a research technique, there's something to back that up. I love that about you. And actually, I think that's one of the things I love most is that I know that you're the person that if I call and I'm like, Mike and I got in this fight and we're talking about this, you have no problem saying, yeah, you're probably in the wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> I mean, cause I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I won't be like, Amy, you're all messed up, but I'll be like, you know, Amy, yeah, you're right. And I, and I think it's a matter of how I, how you deliver that, but it's true. You know what I mean? We have to be able to be accountable for when we're right and when we're wrong. So, wow. Thanks, Amy. I didn't know you think it would be like that. <laughs> we, ha we have to be coachable because yeah. so often we pay for coaches and we don't take their advice. And what is the point if you're not going to genuinely take a moment and listen and try to see it from their set of eyes. Yep. So. Absolutely. So what is the number one resource that has helped you build your business to where it is today? You know, it's uh, I came across it. It's called, it's a website. It's called lean stack, lean stack dot org and it's um i can't remember the name of the book it, they also wrote a book about this and it, it's um i think it's leanstack.org it's really you know i've always struggled with this whole business plan concept because i've always found it to be something like so overwhelming uh -huh. to have to figure everything out and here comes this resource that was you know, created like an actual tool based on this book. And it really helps you get to like the quick seven things you need to know in your business to really grow it. So that would be one resource that I would share um, that really has changed my business over the last three years. I use it every year, every year, even for the new business that I'm, I'm going to launch and it's free. That's cool. the beauty of it. Awesome. Well, we will make sure that we link that in the show notes. What one piece of advice would you give a woman, a woman business owner who was maybe at that $50,000, $75,000 a year gross revenue where she's really trying to scale her business 
but doesn't really know what to do next. You know, the one piece of advice, if you're at that level, number one, number one, I would say, make sure that you're owning <laughs> what it is that you build for yourself. Because I find that as women, we don't own that. Oh, well, it's not good enough. I haven't reached 100,000. I haven't reached this. And it's like, quit poo-pooing yourself. Look what you've built. That is the first thing. Once you own that, go out there and find a group of women led by a mentor, a mentor who has built a business that you're like, wow, can show, like can actually, you can see that they built that business and hire that person immediately. Because I'm telling you right now, you're not going to go past that number trying to do it on your own. And, and surround yourself with, with, look into their network, see what kind of network they have, see what they've invested in, to, in themselves. And then, you know, no matter what it costs, does it cost 20? Does it cost 25? Does it cost 40,000? You know what? But you know that what you're going to invest and what you're going to get on return is just going to triple or double, double or triple your business, I should say. Um, and that would be the best advice that I would say for a woman who's at that bracket right now. So you have a whole bunch of things going on in your business, and I would love for you to brag a little bit and tell us what you're working on that you're most excited about right now. So we are launching an extension of our brands, which is a cosmetics line. Um, really, really, you know, it's just, it's not just any cosmetics line. My long-term vision is to really build a woman's wellness company, right? That encompasses the mind, body, and spirit because where our mind, you know, where our mind is, where our mind goes, our body follows, right? And we are mind, body, and spirit all together. Um, and one of those things is that when, when we talk about mind, body, and spirit and, and women's wellness and empowerment and all this stuff, at the end of the day, it comes down to how you feel about you or about yourself. You have that radical self-love. And so I wanted to really bring forth a brand and start with something that we can start transforming from the outside in. Because, yeah, transformation happens also from the inside out. But sometimes that doesn't work for all of us. We have to start with the outside in. And that works for us. I mean, we're not cookie cutter. And so I'm really excited to be launching our cosmetics line in the next month. Um, it's going to be called Incredible Love. And I, you know, you can visit incrediblelove.com and sign up for a wait list. We have all different types of beauty products, but they're very particular. It's for the professional woman who wants to transition from that day to night look. Are you single? Are you married? You're going out on a date with your hubby. You're going out on a first date. You're going out with the girls night. We want to give you the tools to help you transition that look into the next thing. Awesome. So by the time this airs, then it probably will already be out. So incrediblelove.com? Incrediblelove.com. Perfect. And tell us where can our listeners connect with you? Where are you hanging out nowadays? You know, I'm on Instagram. I was on Facebook, but I'm on Instagram. So please connect with me on Instagram. It's at msmith.michelle. That's what two L's dot G. So I'd love for you to connect. Send me a DM and, um, you know, let's connect on there. I'm always on there doing stories and stuff. <laughs> Perfect. Well, again, we'll make sure we have that in the show notes, but Michelle is super active on Instagram and she's always doing great little tips and everything. And again, whether you're looking for a relationship or you're in a relationship, so many of the tips are helpful just about identifying who you are and how you're showing up in the world. Absolutely. You're still dating one another even once you get married. Let's not forget that, people. <laughs> even more so sometimes because, again, when, when you start paying bills together and you start with responsibilities and who's going to unload the dishwasher and who's going to <laughs> pick up the socks off the floor, right? you know, it just, it's really important to continue to still go out and date because otherwise, I know that at times in our relationship, I've looked at Mike and I'm like, you're way more of a roommate than you are a husband right now. You know, yeah. but we all go through those phases and Absolutely. it's so important. So thank you so much for your time. Always a joy. You just, you bring light to any room that you walk into. So thank you. Thank you. I love you. And to your listeners, thank you for your time. And remember every day is a new day to reignite your relationships. 
In today's episode, we talked about masterminds and mentors. So if you would like our free checklist on questions to ask before joining a mastermind, please go to the show notes at LemonadePodcast.com. Thank you for listening to Turning Lemons into Lemonade, where women go for support and encouragement to hear how other women business owners turn their setbacks into successes to create six and seven figure businesses. We look forward to seeing you next week.